All right, so now we have our function defined. Let's define our main function. Now, if you try to run this program, nothing will happen, right? Because you've only defined function. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and save it. Um, I'm going to save it here. Let's see. All right, so desktop. I have some screenshots there. Let's see. Python programming challenges, chapter 7. We only have the first program done. So I'm going to create another folder. In that folder, I'm going to call this. What's the name of this? Lottery number generator. <coughs> and inside this folder, I'm going to save this file, which is going to be lottery number generator.py. Save it. See if we have any errors. Okay, not yet. So, I mean, <laughs> or we don't have any errors. Is it not yet? All right. So when I run this, nothing happens because we've only defined functions. And you need to call them, right? But first, let's define our main function. Our main function, uh, main function, the main function in most programming languages is basically where your program is. It's the function that calls every other function. It's good practice to always have a main function that calls every other function. It's basically your starting point of your program. So let's define one. Define main, and in main, now we can go ahead and write our program. Now the first thing we need to do, I'm going to define. Um, now, what you can do is you can you can even make this program better, right? This it said the program should generate seven random numbers each in a range of zero through nine. You can make the program dynamic and allow the user to type in how many numbers, random numbers it should generate. You can do that. As a matter of fact, let's do that. Um, okay, I don't want to I don't want to um, go off off the of the question, but then you can always do that. You can use the input function to prompt the user for input. But for now, let's store it as a constant. All right, so by popular convention, when you're naming a constant, you, you make sure that the name is all, all uppercase, and if it's more than one word, you separate each word uh, with an underscore, or you separate the words with an underscore. So what I want to call this is number of lottery numbers, right? So it's going to be number underscore of lottery numbers this way. <coughs> Sorry. And I'm going to type in seven because the question said we should generate seven. Um, so basically, uh, seven, yeah, seven, seven lottery numbers. All right. The next thing I want to do is start calling our functions. Let's call um, generate lottery numbers. So I'm going to call generate lottery numbers. And generate lottery numbers basically takes in how many lottery numbers we want to generate, the number of lottery numbers. We have it here. So that's a, as a, basically a constant. So I'm going to copy, sorry, I'm going to copy the name of a constant and paste it here. All right. Now we know the generate lottery numbers function returns a lottery numbers list, right? So I'm going to come up here and define a list to hold whatever list is returned. Again, it doesn't matter. They have the same names. I'm going to call this lottery numbers. I'm going to um, declare basically an empty list. It doesn't matter. The scope of this variable is within the main function, and the scope of these other ones are within the their respective functions. So, generate lottery numbers is going to take in a, a number of lottery numbers, and it's going to return a lottery numbers list. We have a lottery numbers list here that 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 can receive that list, and so I'm going to store whatever list is returned from the generate lottery numbers function into lottery numbers, into, into this lottery numbers list. Now, if we have a list, we can print out the lottery numbers. We define a function for that. So I'm going to call print lottery numbers. Print lottery numbers receives or accept a lottery numbers list, or basically a list, you know, containing numbers, which we have here, you know. So I'm going to copy it and paste it in the print lottery numbers function. The print lottery numbers function just prints it out. And so we're done with, with our functions, basically. Now, again, when you run this program, nothing will happen because you've only defined functions. You haven't called it. Even though the main function is calling other functions, the main function is a function itself, and you need to call it for it to work or for it to call the other functions. And so down here, I'm going to call the main function. And now we can run it and see what happens. All right, so we can see that it's working. We can see it's generating 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, random numbers in the range of zero through nine. But this is not how we want to display. So let's add some, some beauty to it. First of all, before I print out the lottery numbers, before it, I'm going to just print out the message. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm going to print out a message here and say that <clears throat> the lottery numbers are, um, or we can even make it, you know, be, be dynamic. We have the number of lottery numbers here. Um, so we can say the number of lottery numbers, passing it in here as separate arguments. So let's just space this out a little bit. Okay, so the number of lottery numbers here for today. Uh, so that's uh, actually let's 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 we want to say that so if this contains seven, it's going to say the seven. Uh, let's just make sure the word is correct. So the seven lottery numbers for today <coughs> are okay. Now you can see that I'm about to, ex actually let's continue. The, the seven lottery numbers for today are, and then I'm going to put the comma here. And actually, let's just put a colon, not a comma. And then it basically displays the numbers, right? You can see I'm exceeding this line here. I don't know if you can see it, this gray line here. This gray line is a guideline for me not to exceed, actually seven, 79 characters on the line. I thought it was 80, maybe it's 80, I just haven't counted. But either 79 or 80, it's a Python standard not to exceed I think 79 or 80 characters on a line. And so if I'm crossing this guideline here, that means I'm exceeding it. And so I want to follow that Python standard. So what, I, what it means is I need to break this line into two. So I can break it somewhere around here. Don't break it in a string because if you type in a backslash, well, well sorry, <laughs> before you break the line, you have to type in a backslash, right? But if you type in a backslash in a string, it, it, this is going, not going to do anything. This is going to basically print out a string. You don't want that. So outside of the string, right after the comma, I'm going to type in a backslash and break it by hitting enter. But the thing is, it, it hasn't messed up this code. It's just the same you know, line of code has just been broken to two separate lines. It's still functional because we, add, we put a backslash before, before breaking it. <clears throat> All right, so let's run this and see what happens. So now it says the seven lottery numbers for today are, and it displays our lottery numbers. But we don't want to display in this way, although you can. I want it to display horizontally. So we can do something like, let's see, um, in our print lottery numbers, numbers function, we print it out. And because each, each print function ends with a new line character, we don't want it to end with a new line character. We want it to end with something else. I'm going to pass in as an argument. Also, I, I forgot to mention that when you pass in arguments into the print function by, the print function, you know, separated by comments by default, they are, they are printed um, separated with a space. Each of these arguments are printed are printed separated with a space. That's why we can see v, this first, uh, this is one argument, this is another argument, and this is the third argument. They are all separated with a space. Actually, we have two here. I, don't, I didn't have to um, include that space. Okay, all right, so I was working on this, and that's why we have an error. So I wanted us to print the number. Let's just show you where we are. I'm going to remove it and now run it. Okay, so it prints it a number, but I wanted it to display the numbers horizontally. <coughs> so that, it's, it's displaying it vertically because it's printing out a number and ending each number with a new line. We don't want it to end with a new line, so I'm going to modify the end value by passing it in as an argument. End is equal to, in double quotations, I want it to end it with a comma after printing out each, each number, end it with a comma and a space. So let's do that. And then let's run it. So we can see it's displaying it horizontally now. If you want, you can, you can even go ahead and say, okay, you want to make this a period. Uh, you, can, you can do it, you can figure it out. Um, so the, what's, what's the number that is, that the, so basically the number that it's adding a comma, the, la, the number that we want to make a period is basically this last number here. And we know if you have seven items, for example, the index of this, uh, the, the index of the last element okay, is going to be six. The index of the last element is always one less than the length of the array. If you have an array that contains, sorry, and if you have a list that contains, let's say, five items, the index of the first element is zero, and then the index of the last element is not five, but four. 
is always one less than the length of the list. If you have five elements, then the length of the list is five. But the index of the fifth element is four, always one less than the length of, of the list. And so we can target this value here. We can target this, this value here. If we have seven elements, then its index, its index is six. So we can say that if the index okay, is, is equal to okay, the length of this list, which is seven, minus one, which, ha which, ha which will always be the last index of this uh, last element, or the, the index of this last element. We can target this value here, and we can see if, if it's this number, we want to add a, a period instead of a comma. Now, this is just an addition to it, but basically we're done with the program. Um, so let's, let's, let's try to do that. Um, so in our main function, sorry, in our print lottery numbers function where it's printing out the numbers, we can have an if statement in our for loop and say if um, the current lottery number index, right, remember if it's a seven, if a seven number array, then it's looping from, okay, it's assigning numbers to current lottery number index from zero to six, and six is going to be the last index. So if the current lottery number index is equal to, now I'm using two double equal sign. When you use two, two double equal signs, you're comparing. If you use one equal sign, you're assigning what's on the right to what's on the left. If you use two double equal signs, you're asking, is what's on the right equal to what's on the left? So if the current lottery number index is, is equal to or is equivalent to the length of this particular list over here, okay, minus one. If it's equal to the last index, when the last index will always be one less than the length of the list. So if, if, if that is the number we are targeting here, then don't print an end, don't print that number and end with a comma, print that number and end with a, with a period. And I'm going to continue with an else here and say else, else means if the index is not the last index, okay, if it's the index is not targeting the last, um, element in the array. Oops. Any updates? All right. <laughs> I need to keep on disabling some of the stuff. Let's disable Discord too and Telegram. Although we're we're done, we're almost done. So, so if the index is not equal to the, the last index, or if, if it's not an index of the last element, then let's print it the way we were printing it out. So print out, print out the number by end with a comma. So let's see, let's see if this fixes that. So run. And it works. It prints out the numbers and ends the last one with a period because we were targeting it. We were saying at any time if we if this if the current lottery number index held held the index or holds the index of the last element, then let's go ahead and end with a period. And the last element will always have an index one less than the length of the array. Okay. So the seven lottery numbers for today are three nine one five one six one. And the good thing is now you can change this to 20, and it's going to generate 20 numbers for you and the last one with a period, right? If you have 20 elements in the list, then the, last, the index of the last element, the index of the 20th element will be 19 because you're starting from zero, okay, which is the index for the first element, one, which is the index for the second element, all the way to 19, which is the index of the 20th element. So, so this program works. Let's see if there's anything we had to do. Um, the program should generate seven random numbers in a range of zero through nine and assign each number to a list element. And then now we just display the numbers. So let's change this back to seven, run it, and, and we're done. Okay, so if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll keep the videos coming um, daily. I do my best. Uh, I've been all over the place. <laughs> um, have a good night. Have a nice time. Have a good sleep. Have a have a have a sound sleep. <laughs> um, and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then. Bye bye.